Where does water go when it rains? This sounds like an easy question, but it is far more complicated than it appears. Getting the answer right is important for understanding the environmental effects of many of our activities, from land development to fertilizer use. Let's think about this some more. Where does water go when it rains? It can take various pathways. It could run off into a lake or a stream. It could evaporate right away. The water could be taken up by a plant. Or water could filter down into the ground. Water flows at different speeds along flow paths, resulting in different travel times. These two factors, flow paths and travel times, are important research areas in modern hydrologic science. We can talk to people and say, when do you think the water in that river fell out of the sky? Most people say, oh, it was last week when it rained or something like that. No, it was 40 years ago. There's two great forces that um, cause water to move around. One is the sun and the other is gravity. So the sun raises water up, it causes water to evaporate up into the atmosphere, and then gravity, once the precipitation has happened, is pulling the water down. So as water flows, it flows across the land surface rather easily, but it also flows very slowly uh, through rocks and rock crevices and cracks and even small and um, porous uh, areas in rocks. Perhaps like maybe one centimetre a day or something like that. Right near the stream, the time of travel through the soil might be a few minutes. But as you get to all the way up on the edge of the basin and you're worried about how, how long it takes the water to get down to the river, it's, it could take decades and even centuries. So part of what we want to do is understand what is the groundwater shed as well as the surface watershed. New technology allows us to map underground rock structures that can hold water, aquifers. In this animation from Denmark, we can see clay lenses located beneath underground valleys, valleys that are now filled with sand. Glaciers formed these structures many thousands of years ago. Wells are shown here that tap into these sand aquifers. To answer the question, where does water go when it rains and how quickly, we need to understand how a watershed works. A watershed is a bounded system from ridge line to outlet, from bedrock through the canopy to the sky, and all of the water entering and leaving it can be measured. Some measurements, like measuring stream flow at weirs, are simple and have been done for centuries. Others, like measuring transpiration, require the latest technologies and have only recently been possible. Trying to measure all the fluxes, all the water flow rates, from rainfall coming in, evaporation leaving, groundwater flow moving laterally, infiltration in the soil, all those fluxes have never been measured precisely together at any place. And so we're trying to redefine what a hydroclimatic station, a weather station would be by going from bedrock through the canopy. Then we can ask the question, how does a watershed partition the rain that falls within its boundaries? Knowing how a watershed partitions the rain will allow us to make predictions and improve planning. For example, how will harvesting trees or developing the land change the likelihood of flooding or landslides? Will different patterns of development reduce risk? Water also carries chemicals and sediment. Understanding the paths by which water flows underground and over the surface and how long it takes will enable us to predict how human activities, such as agriculture and construction, will impact water quality and how long it might take to see these effects. Where does water go when it rains? Into your watershed. Everyone lives in a watershed. Learn more about where you live.